So fall is in the air. It's a little cooler. There's a little nip in the air. And it's the time of year for comfort food. But you got a couple of problems going on. Number one, you got company coming over, so you got to feed a ton of people for not a whole lot of cash, right? Number two, you just had surgery, so you're not quite there yet. You can't eat the solid foods. What are you going to do? Well, you know what? Today is all about fall favorites, crock-pot comfort, easy stuff that you can put together quickly. Not a whole lot of money, not a whole lot of hurry. And you know what? These are things that we can modify if you're on soft foods, if you're on a liquid diet, or if you're on full solids. You can eat any of these delicious and wonderful dishes. So stick with us because we're going to have a great time today on 7 Bites. I'm Jennifer. I'm Sue. Welcome to 7 Bites. Today we're talking about fall favorites, comfort foods that you can toss into the crock pot that you can eat at any stage of your surgery, whether you're on full liquids all the way to full solids. So This sounds good because I'm hungry for some good food. The weather's turned a little bit colder here and we are so excited. So this means for us, chilies, soups, stoops, soups, stews. <laughs> And a lot of other really great foods. So today, I'm going to show you guys my super awesome, really easy chili recipe. All right, we're going to start off here. This is going to feed a ton of people, by the way, so don't let the amount scare you, all right? We're going to start off with a couple of pounds of lean ground beef, and I've just browned this off with a whole onion that I've chopped up and a couple of cloves of garlic that I've just minced. So I'm going to just dump that into my pot. And if we're doing the crock pot, what you're going to want to do is just dump all of this into okay. your crock pot. All right, and the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to hand this over to my mom. This is an entire six ounce can of tomato paste. Yummy. A whole six ounces. A lot of times you'll see recipes that only use a couple of tablespoons. I like to use the whole can because I like my chili to be really nice and thick and meaty and delicious. That's what some people don't realize. The different tomato products do different jobs for you. Here, let me it's making you. my mouth water till I can't just mm -hmm. thinking about it. Oh. Yes. So, okay. but tomato yeah. paste will thicken your broth and uh, you don't have to add um, cornstarch, or flour, flour, anything traditionally, like that. Traditionally, uh, chili recipes are going to add something called masa harina as a thickener or you might also use flour or corn flour this has none of that in there because we found that it just kind of is a filler that doesn't work well. All right, so to this, I've got an entire can of crushed tomatoes. This is a big can. This one, i got to look at the size here because I forgot. This is 28 ounces, which is an entire pound and 12 ounces of crushed tomatoes. And I use the crushed tomatoes as opposed to diced tomatoes because I find that it's a little more pureed and thicker. And I like the texture better. If you prefer diced tomatoes over crushed tomatoes, just use two cans of the diced tomatoes and it will work out beautifully. And I want to point out that Jennifer, her taste is a little different from mine. Mine is yeah. more traditional Texas red chili. Hers has got a little bit of fun stuff in it. So. Mine has a lot of fun stuff in it and it's what really makes this just stand out. Okay, first of all, we're going to add a bottle of beer. Now, typically, I'm going to be using about a cup and a half of some wonderful homebrew because my husband brews beer, and it's fantastic. And so, but what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to use a really, really good craft beer. Whatever your taste is. The reason you want to use a good beer is because this flavor is going to condense. Now, the alcohol is going to cook out of this, but the flavor is not. And so you want something that tastes good. And there's a lot of beers on the market that just don't taste very good. And so find yourself a really good quality craft beer. Very important. All right. Now the next thing we're going to add is the most important part of chili. What makes chili chili is the chili powder. And there are so many different chili powders on the market today. You can find anything from just a regular standard run-of-the-mill chili powder to ancho chili powder to chipotle chili powder. So, you know, whatever you like, just kind of have a little fun with it. Um, next, I'm going to add my spice mix. This is my traditional chili spice blend. This is what usually goes into chili. Some people kind of, you know, 
vary here and there. This has got a teaspoon of black pepper, two teaspoons each of salt, cumin, paprika, oregano, onion powder, and garlic powder. And this, this I'm familiar with. This, <laughs> this is I'm... the traditional chili mix. And you notice and then, we're not adding any beans to this? Uh, no. Texas Red does not have beans. And if you do add beans in Texas chili, it's got to be uh, pinto, pinto beans, beans on the side. <laughs> and it's got to be, if you put them in the chili, if you're in a ter- terlingua cook-off, you can put anything you want to in there as long as when it's they look at beans. it, it's red <laughs> and you can't see the beans. So, yeah. you know, I'm a traditionalist. I've been involved with a cook-off and I really, I think chili should be meat. Chili is chili. Chili is meat. Texas All are right. beef raisins. So right here I've got some red pepper flake because chili needs a little bit of heat. Otherwise it just kind of falls flat. So I'm only going to add a couple of pinches because... I've got my kids here, and they're not going to want it all really spicy. My kids don't like really spicy food. Um, but you can add as much as you like. And here I actually have a whole teaspoon and a half. If you want to add a whole teaspoon and a half, go for it. You know, that would be like five alarm, blow your ears out. So <laughs> That's true. And, but it's and, delicious. Uh, this is at a point where if you wanted to add chipotle, uh, a can yes. of chipotle I loved, I actually love to do that occasionally. I'll add some chipotle chilies. Or you can find some dried chilies a lot of times, and you can use your whole chili blend and just toss them in there. And it works so well and is absolutely delicious. All right, now here are my variations. These are my secret ingredients. Okay, my first secret ingredient, I have to give a shout-out to my best friend in the world, Laura, because I actually stole this from her. All right, she uses brown sugar in her, her chili. Now, this is actually brown sugar substitute. Um, if you can tolerate real brown sugar, go for it. If not, you can use the brown sugar substitute. If you can't find this, you can use a couple of tablespoons of molasses, and that will give you the same kind of flavor. But this just kind of gives it a little sweetness. It just kind of offsets all of the vinegariness of the tomatoes because tomatoes are very acidic. So it kind of cuts some of that acidity and gives it just a little touch of sweetness. And here comes the weird. This is my secret ingredient, okay? Cinnamon. I love cinnamon in chili because it's actually a very traditional Mexican ingredient in a lot of savory dishes. And so I added it to my chili one day just for kicks and giggles because I was on a cinnamon kick. And I have never made a pot of chili without it. Unless I'm making it, of course, for my friend Laura, who can't have cinnamon because she's allergic to it. So she actually uses allspice, and it's just as good. So if you don't like cinnamon, toss some allspice in there for just a little bit of a flavor variation. Well, let me give you another one. Drop a about a half a block of grated dark chocolate into your chili. You won't know what it is, and it will give you a depth of flavor that is just unbelievable. She I had know. me at chocolate. <laughs> and, you know, mole comes from Mexico. Mole is chocolate derived. It's chocolate it is, based. It's got it is, chocolate it in it. It has unsweetened baking chocolate in it. So, oh, Well, unsweetened Mexican chocolate, which yeah. is a little bit different. But so, so that is it. That's all you do. You're going to toss it into your pan here. Now, if you're making it in a pot, you're going to want to, of course, go ahead and just brown your onions and your meat just in the same pot. I did it ahead of time. But you can do it right in the same pot and just toss everything right on top. And then we're going to toss this over here. Well, set it gently. I'm not going to be throwing stuff in this kitchen. I'm going to put it over here on the stove, and we're going to let this start heating up. What you're going to want to do, if you're making it in the pot on the stovetop, you're going to cook it um, about medium-high heat until it comes to a bubble, until it comes up to a boil. Then you're going to turn the heat down to about in between low, medium-low, and pop a lid on it, and you're going to cook it for up to two and a half hours, two and a half to three hours, and just it. stirring it. Every once in a while, peeking in there, giving it a quick stir. If it looks like it's boiling down or condensing, you can add some more, a little bit of water in there. You can add some more beer in there. You can add some beef stock, whatever, any liquid that you want to add. Go right on ahead and add some in there. And if you're doing this in the crock pot, you're just going to toss everything in the crock pot, pop it on low for up to 12 hours, or you're going to do it on high for up to 8 hours, and it's just going to be absolutely fabulous and delicious. And then, like I said, this is one of those meals that if you're on... Anywhere from liquids to soft foods to full solids, you can have this. If you're on liquids, you're going to want to pop this into a blender and give it a whir before you, before you consume it. So. One other thing that we were talk, have been talking about is freezing in portion sizes. Yes, very Using, important. We have some half cup size 
yes, freezer we do. cups. And these are terrific for carrying for your lunch. That made noise, I'm sure. Or just <laughs> having it for uh, your supper. And these are great. And when something is done cooking, you know, you can pop out whatever you need for dinner that night. And then go ahead and put some serving sizes away for later on. That way you're not tempted to go back. And if somebody else is having some issues and doesn't need to be tempted, they're not tempted either. That's true. That's true. All right. I'm going to put this on the stove. And while I'm good. doing that, Mom's actually got a delicious recipe for you as well. Hi, this is Sue, and I'm going to be talking about making some homemade stew. Just the plain old stew that you grew up with. Beef stew is so good. Beef stew is good. All right. I, I browned the meat, and my trick is I use a little bit of soy flour on my meat when I brown it because I can't tolerate soy very well, but I don't want to add any flour. I wanted something. We're keeping it low carb. Well, lower uh, carb. Lower you're going to see that it's not actually we're, low carb. We're not doing no carb. We're not doing no carb. We're doing better carbs. Better carbs. Better and, carbs. you know, let's be honest. We get hungry for a potato. I went eight years without being able to eat one of these little jewels because of the lap band. I can eat a little bit of it now. I don't go overboard because I have to keep it in control, but I can have some. And that's the beauty of having the sleeve. Yeah. So what we're going to do is put this together real quick and get the pot on the stove. Okay. I've already browned the meat. All right. While you do that, I'm going to go ahead and chop these up. Chop those up. You want these big pieces or little pieces? Oh, medium. Okay. N not too small. Um, I started out, when I browned this, it, they stuck to the pan. And so what I did was take some beef broth and deglaze the pan. So that's the broth you're seeing in here right now. I'm just going to dump these in that big mess. Yep, that's fine. Okay. Just toss those in. And I, in this bowl, I have, I got a medium bag of um, already cleaned carrot tidbits, whatever you, they are. Mm. They're real carrots. Baby carrots. They just cut them down to make these. So um, anyway, I used about a half a bag. I used a half of an, a large onion. And I used uh, one clove of garlic, and I've got a couple of sprigs of rosemary. And I'm just going to throw that in on the top because I don't care whether it goes deep into the soup or not. It's going to flavor it anyway, and this way you can kind of fish it out. Because some people don't like the texture of a rosemary leaf. That's true. And I want to show you my, this is my secret ingredient. I call it roadkill seasoning. It's just garlic powder. <laughs> onion, and uh, black pepper, and salt. Wait a minute. Garlic powder, salt, salt pepper, and pepper. Salt, garlic powder. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I use a liberal amount because we do have starchy vegetables in here. So, and then we're going to cover this with beef broth. And I've got a about a half or a quarter of a, I guess about a half a cup of that wine. And we're you can add use that. red wine or white wine. This is just what I happen to have sitting in the cabinet. Just use what you got on hand. That's, you know, the beauty of all of this. But and traditionally have, you would put red wine, but we're using white wine today and it doesn't matter. It's just as good. And the key to wine is never throw a bottle of wine away because there's always going to be a little bit left. It will keep you can cook with it. Keep a long, long time. So we're going to my last ingredient is this really neat a tube of uh, tomato paste. I love tomato paste in a tube because if you need only a small amount, some recipes call for a whole, you know, eight ounce can. Some you only need just a little bit. And I'm using just a, a little bit. About a third of this. So that's a couple of taste tablespoons, would you say? Probably. And I'm going to just mix it up. We're going to stick this on the stove. It will thicken the soup. Already smells really good. And, you know, I love the smell of rosemary. Rosemary and beef to me just are an incredible aroma. It's just fantastic. Well, we're going to make it come up to a boil and we're going to cook it till the potatoes and the carrots are tender because it takes less time for the meat to cook than it does for the potatoes mm -hmm. and the carrots. And then what you can do is dip out a portion and remember that. 
blender that I showed you on our first episode. Yes. The personal blender. Our wonderful personal personal, but I can't talk today. Our wonderful personal blender. And if you are on pure uh, pureed okay. or, or total liquids, puree it. If you can eat chopped, chop it. Yeah. And if you can eat normally, if you're on full eat normally. solids, eat normally. And that's so. what we're talking about here is you can do this. And you can do this with other soups too. It doesn't have to be chicken, or I'm sorry, not chicken. It doesn't have to be beef stew. I got chicken on the brain, all right? It doesn't well, have to be beef stew. It doesn't have to be chili. If you make a wonderful chicken soup, toss it in there and do the same thing. It there's works. a lot of beautiful squash out right now. Oh, and yes, gourds, there is. You know, beautiful. Different pumpkins, things like that. You can chop those up, cook them. And you can either leave them with a little texture or you can puree yeah. them and make a pumpkin soup or a squash soup. Yeah, and they're delicious. This is the time of year to experiment yep. with all the tips that we're giving you. Okay, so we're going to dish up some of this amazing soup for you here in just a second. And when we do, you're just going to be astonished because it looks and tastes absolutely beautiful. <laughs> we'll be right back. All right, are y'all ready to see what these amazing dishes look like I'm so excited about this first I want to tell you guys real quick if you're kind of you know needing to get some more veggies in what I've got here is just some pre-washed baby kale and it's really just a great addition you can do this with baby kale with spinach Swiss chard just about any green toss a couple handfuls in your stew pot in your soup pot and you have an extra boost of veggies in there and I know sometimes for me it's really hard to get my veggies in and veggies are almost as important as your protein they're kind of on the same boat you gotta have both in order to have a you know healthy system so that's just a quick tip to just toss it in there real quick and away you go and that works in just about anything so alright we have here our chili dip me some of that chili I'm going to dip, dip you some, some of that chili. chili I gotta try that chili the chili is that's so good that's a lot of chili it makes a it makes a ton of chili. Would you like some uh, Greek yogurt or some cheese on top? I'd rather have cheese. Just cheese. All right. We got some good quality grated cheddar here. I shredded it myself. It's actual real cheese that I grated. I'm gonna be the test. <laughs> and I'm gonna put both on. I use Greek yogurt instead of sour cream because there's a little more protein in Greek yogurt. I pretty much have it on hand all the time. And I'm gonna set that down before I dump it. <laughs> So I'm going to just pop some, some of that on there, just like that. And then I'm going to put some of my really, really good quality cheddar cheese. And we can't stress quality ingredients, man, is what makes it just the best. because. Well, if you're cooking in bulk and you're not cooking every day, you can spend a little more on ingredients because you're not eating so much That's of the right. stuff you don't need. The stuff that costs a lot is the stuff that comes in boxes. Mm -hmm. And that's so. what that looks like right there. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. Mm. My mouth is watering. Mm. 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 It is so good. It tastes just like chili is supposed to taste. That little kick from that cayenne pepper flake that I was doing there. And the sweetness is just like it's very it's mild. You can't really tell that it's there, but there's the tomatoes just aren't quite as acid. And you can't even really tell that the cinnamon is in there, but it just kind of gives it kind of that... What is that kind of a flavor? Just don't tell your dad that's yogurt and he'll eat it. You know? <laughs> now we're going to... This is what I've been waiting for. I love beef stew so much. And, and oh my goodness, that's a huge matter. Yeah, I, I overdid it there. <laughs> But... Look at that. I made a mess. Yep, that's okay. Because that's you know okay. what? Messy food is good food. I'm just going to use my chili spoon. That works. <laughs> I'll see. Set it on something. Mm. But that portion, I'm sure you're going to say, oh my gosh, that's huge. That's that's a lot, but you know what? We can share. Look how tender that meat is. It just falls apart. The meat is falling apart. That is delicious. And this has only been in about three and a half, four hours on high. Mm. Mm. Yeah, baby. And remember to eat, eat the... Eat the protein, uh, protein first, first, and then eat your carrots and your taters. Because even the broth, mm. if you're just if oh, you're so just on broth, yeah, you know what? That's a great point because clear liquids 
There you go. You can just strain the broth right off of that. And it's actually fortified. It's got the vitamins and the uh, nutrients coming off of the meat and the vegetables that went right into that broth. So believe it or not, you're getting some stuff in that broth. Now, had I cooked this uncovered on the stove, it would be a lot thicker. Leftovers will be thicker. That's yeah. just a proven point. That's just the way it is. So I It's going to kind of soak into stuff. I'm like, going to eat another bite because okay. it's so good. I like my chili and my stew both to set overnight before I serve them mm -hmm. because it changes, it gives a depth of flavor that you don't get otherwise. Absolutely, and you can do a two-day chili. You can cook it in the crock pot for a day, pop it in the refrigerator overnight, take it out, set it out for about an hour before you put it back on the crock pot so it comes up to room temperature. You don't want to break that crock. And then you're going to stick it back in your crock pot and let it go for another little bit. And, you know, two-day chili is always awesome. If, if you like beans in your chili, some of you might, what you can do is you can throw some beans in there. Now, of course, it's not Texas chili if you do that. But what we like to do here in Texas is we'll serve up a little bit of pinto beans and we'll pour our chili right on top. And we'll use the beans as a condiment. And it's delicious that way as well. And you also, again, fiber boost, protein boost. That's what it's all about, guys. One more little hint. If you want to make this chili with turkey or chicken, it works, works perfect. If you want to do the same thing with the beef stew, it works perfect. It works beautifully. Use, use chicken broth in place of uh, beef broth. Mm -hmm. And remember, you can find these little half cup sized portion containers so that when you freeze your food for later on, you can just put some in there. Make sure you label it and you date it. And these are going to be good up to, what would you say, about six months? Six months is about probably six months. about right. And then, you know, just make sure, like I said, you label it and date it, and you can just go back and keep on eating this delicious comfort food all year long. All winter long, anyway. So. Bon appetit. Bon appetit. I'm so glad that you guys joined us today. Thank you guys so much for being here. Don't forget to like our channel and subscribe to our channel so you can catch all of our videos and you don't miss a thing because we're going to be doing lots more stuff in the future a lot more coming we've already done a lot and we're going to be doing even more thank you guys for your love and your support you're awesome bye see ya